Tears rolled up as I forced my eyes open against the roaring wind. I stood there on a 1952 built veranda covered with green moss and dust gathered throughout the decades. A storm is coming. The melancholy in the gray skies of Myanmar was almost palpable without any essence of illuminating sunlight. As small raindrops create little black patches on the veranda's concrete floor, my friend Siphon called me back inside to show him a device that I brought. Take it out, Bie. I want to see what's like. Siphon excitedly shouted. I put my hands inside the black case and took out a white Vio laptop, which was my eighth birthday present that my mother brought home from Singapore. Sai ran his hands over the smooth cover and held it as if it was a huge diamond. To him, it is a diamond. This is his first time to see and touch a laptop in his entire life. At that moment, my nanny came in and told us it was time to go to school. So we packed our bags and followed her. You have to teach me how to play games on your computer, yeah? And no matter who asks, I'm the first one to play. Promise? He played me with his cute puppy eyes. I agreed simply not to upset him, but my mother's words rang in my ears as if I committed a crime. Don't let any of your friends touch your laptop. Look at their fingernails. It's going to make it dirty, and I'm not buying you a new one. In fact, I don't even want you to take it to school. I quickly shook off her words and looked at my best friend with sympathy. Why does my mom belittle my friend so much? I know he gets the privilege of riding a car to school because of me, but it doesn't mean she has to look down on him every time. I looked out from the window and saw other moms holding their children's hands to send them to school. Where is my mom to do that? Sure, she provided a chauffeur and a nanny, but it pains me every time to see other children saying goodbye to their moms while the last face I see before school was my nanny's. As we got to school, my nanny dropped us off with the class teacher. Sai and I lined up behind her with our other classmates, which is a daily routine before we walked to the classroom to sing the anthem and pledge to the dictator. The whole court, which we were queuing in, was roaring with noise. Teachers were shouting at little children for running around, and a few kids comparing the new Power Ranger toys. Of course, Sai was going around boasting how he had been the first one to touch my new laptop and people gathered around me to see my new magical device. I have to say, I was very happy with the attention I got. Finally, we walked to the classroom with our little index fingers on our mouths and finished singing the pledge. Obviously, my ego had risen up many times full because of the laptop, and I was the only person talking the loudest in the entire classroom. To seek even more attention, I decided to tease the teacher. I asked my teacher a question. Why? Why do we have to stand up every morning to sing, and sing the pledge and salute the dictator? Why do we have to line up in green and white and put our little index fingers on our mouths whenever officials pass? Why? 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 The teacher snapped back at me. Stop asking stupid questions! And went back to writing on her blackboard. As an innocent child who could not perceive the warning in my teacher's voice, the more she resisted, the more I wanted to tease her, to make her angry. Besides, that will stop her from teaching whatever hideous lessons that she had planned. <laughs> I insisted and kept on asking. She ignored me the second time. She kept her eyes fixed on the book, and her crooked, wrinkled fingers glided over the blackboard like three fates scrambling to choose who was to die. The ceiling fans and the dim light casted a looming shadow as if overpowering her little children. Her hair was neatly put into a bundle, and her green and white clothes were immaculate and impeccably crisp, an epitome of the military's propaganda. Just before I asked the third time, everything seemed to slow down. I recall shaking my legs out of mischief and excitement for spiting her. I recall smelling the soothing scent of petrichor, produced when the first heavy monsoon hits the dry soil and the, that the arid summers have sowed. Then my lips moved and the words were uttered. Why, teacher, tell me, I playfully blurted. This time, the teacher exploded. Her bloodshot eyes glared at me from afar, and she summoned me to her desk. I walked up to her, slowly. Her eyes were flinching, and her breathing is long and deep. Am I in trouble? 
I quickly shook off the idea. What's the worst thing that could happen anyway? 10 beatings? <laughs> but then she took out a plastic ruler from her desk drawer and I realized what was going to happen. She was going to hit my knuckles. I hid my hands behind my body as if it was going to be of any help. She yelled at my face, hand out your fists, but I hesitated. I shook my head hard and told her I was sorry. Now I'm on the verge of tears with a huge invisible lump which blocked my throat. I was sweating, sweating despite the cold breeze outside from the incoming storm. And my heart, my heart was racing as if it was going to cringe its way uh, any second. She took my hands from me by force and threatened to give me twice the amount. I did not want to be hit twice the amount, so I surrendered. Then she hit my knuckles hard with the ruler's side. Pain shot right through my hands, to my arms, through my whole body. My body stiffened every time the ruler made contact. I was stupefied and frightened. She kept hitting me and had me chant, I will never ask stupid questions every time she hit me with ruler. I will never ask stupid questions. I will never ask stupid questions. I will never ask stupid questions. A consequence for defying her. Now my whole body was on fire instead of being cold. I tried to hold my tears for the fear of being humiliated in front of my best friend. I was afraid to be humiliated in front of the whole class who, before that point, looked up to me for that laptop. I look at Sai to come to my rescue, but all he did was look at me in sympathy. Silence replaced the excitement in the whole room, and all I could hear was fans blowing cold air on my sweating body. But I eventually gave in. Large tears rolled down my cheeks while the entire, watch, entire class watched me. I wanted to scream. I wanted to explode. But I knew if I had done so, things could have been worse. So I swallowed my voice and kept still. After several beatings, which I lost count, the ruler shattered, and one of the shards pierced my skin and cut my veins. Blood cascaded from my hand, and it horrified me. Punishments with broomstick or canes were common. Push-ups and sit-ups were also seen frequently. However, cutting a second grader's hands with a ruler and making him see blood was completely a whole new level. She could have simply shouted at me. She could have just given me beatings. But instead, she dented my curious brain and broke my confidence. To make things worse, I was scolded again at home. It appears this case was so bad that my mother herself had to come talk to me in person. She came into my room and locked the door. Why is it so bad that my mother, who didn't even have time to eat dinner with me, showing up now? She approached me with her stern look on. Her lips were pressed, and her perfectly iron traditional longi slid against the teak floor. She sat in front of me and had me stand up with my arms crossed. The glare on her golden Cartier glasses portrayed her as a sharp woman. You can't just run around and do everything you want, da. It's dangerous, she yelled. You have no idea what troubles you're getting into. Don't you want to live and have a happy life with us? Thank God the teacher shut you up. You deserve it. My mother chided in my face. I couldn't believe the words being uttered from her mouth, and yet I still recall the anxiousness on her face and her voice. There are things that young children like you don't understand, Da. Do not go against authority. That is one valuable advice I can give you today, and I'm sure you learn your lesson. Only then I understood the unfortunate situation. The country is doomed. It has been for quite a while. No one can question or rise up to the authorities above. Those who bootlick the dictators rise with them. Those who don't are punished in ways worse than being hit and cut with a hard ruler. I was angry at my mom. I was angry at her for accepting what the teacher did to me. I was angry at the teacher. I was angry at her for all the pain that she inflicted. Above all, I was angry at the government. I stopped talking to everyone after what happened. I lifted my broken heart to Buddha and prayed. I asked him to protect me. I did not believe anyone, not even my mother, but I still believed in him. I asked him for strength and I asked him for courage. I even prayed to retract my gift of curiosity and my mouth which brought me pain. I did not know and I cannot tell but I felt like only he could help me then. After the incident, 
My mother quickly relocated me to a private school where I started to learn English. I lost contact with all my old friends back in public school, and my fame with the laptop ceased to exist. I did not talk to anyone or dare to ask any questions at the new school. I was not the same person who stood among the crowd. But then, one thing was different. Teachers were friendly. They taught me how to think independently and to express my opinions. After a while, I became quite comfortable and risked asking one question. Why? Why is it that you're teaching me these things? Is it not forbidden to teach these things in a country like this? The South African teacher, Mr. Gary, replied, Tristan, I will tell you a secret. This is an international school. Only the elites like yourself come here so you can learn whatever you want without any consequences. The truth hit me. The elite meant the family of the military dictators or the family of prominent wealthy tycoons who were big time supporters of the dictators. I found that I'm one of those who I really loathed. I found that my parents and my family supported the military all along. I was so ashamed of who I was and the family I was born into. Now I know why my mother belittled my fellow friends. Now I know why I had that vile laptop while others did not. Now I know why Sai was so proud to carpool with me and have the privilege of stepping out from a car like walking in the limelight. The truth hit me hard.